Hey everybody, it's Compelp. Thank you for watching this video. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to make a wallpaper that looks like this. Now this video might be lengthy, I'm not sure, but if it is, don't worry. Uh, it's very simple to do, and as long as you follow my steps, you'll do it on your own too. And again, the, the video is probably going to be long, but uh, it just takes a while to explain it. When you're actually doing it yourself, you should be able to fly through this like nothing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'm in Adobe Photoshop CS5 right now. It'll work in CS3, CS4, whatever you're comfortable with. So the first thing that we have to do here is actually go to File New and type in your screen resolution. That way you get the perfect size for your desktop's wallpaper, okay? For your screen's wallpaper. All right, minus 1680 by 1050 pixels and change the RGB color. Make sure it's not on grayscale or else it'll be black and white and you'll be wondering what the heck why why don't why aren't I getting any colors so anyways make sure it's on RGB color background contents transparent and we're ready to rock click OK alright so now we are brought up with this blank canvas here these pixel means these pixels mean that the canvas is blank so all we're gonna do first is get this nice gradient background here you probably can't tell um, just by looking at it, but there is a gradient background. Pick the two colors that you know flow with your logo or flow or your two favorite colors or whatever. Preferably one dark and one light color. Okay, like a, a different tone or you'll see what I mean here. I, I can't really describe it right now. I don't know why. But anyways, if you don't have the two default colors, black and white, you can always click this button. Anyways, that's what I did to reset it. Now, I want this white to be like a gray. So I'm going to make it a dark gray and click OK. Now I'm going to go to my gradient tool right here. And if you don't have gradient, it might be a paint bucket tool. Hold, click and hold, and go over to the gradient tool and let go. All right, so you should be on your gradient tool now. And now we're going to be using making a gradient with these two colors. Just click, drag, and OK. Right off the bat, I think I'm going to go with that gradient right there. Looks pretty nice. Okay, so we have our background pretty much finished. We're going to go to this like sticky note looking button here and click create new layer. And we're going to go to the text button here now. So now we're going to be creating a text. All right, so what we need to do is actually make a text box. Make it fill up the whole canvas and some. So make it bigger than the canvas itself. All right, this is pretty important. Now make sure your font color is made to white and just type in whatever you want now. I'm gonna type in comp help. Alright, so after I've typed comp help, let me show you what I have here, I'm gonna also space. So after your word, space it. Or after your sentence, make sure there's a space. So we can have a nice even space between all of these things and they won't be, uh, you know, right up on each other. They won't look like this. It'll look like that with a nice space, okay? So anyways, once you have your space, select comp help or whatever word you did I'm gonna do control C control V V V control V control V all the way across we get comp help okay I'm gonna copy that again and paste alright so now we have comp help going across the board here now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make this a little bit smaller see how it's all organized here I don't want that so I'm going to try to get that all jumbled up like that, okay? And all I did was I moved the box. Um, see, I, I moved the box out. So now there's enough space for the words. If I move the box in a little bit, it'll jumble all the words up. All right, so another important part is you see how comp help starts right here right at the corner? Don't have it like that. Have it up a little bit where it cuts off a little bit of the word. That way it doesn't look so organized and staged, okay? Now, for this, de for these demonstration purposes, um, I actually have this going on. Let me see if I can get rid of that. Um, I doubt I'll be able to, but who knows? Yeah, see, I won't be able to get rid of it without. Uh... Okay. Well, anyways, maybe if I go ahead and make the box bigger, like that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I made the box a little bit bigger and uh, it's still jumbled up there we go okay so anyways cut off the words a little bit so it doesn't look so organized alright I'm gonna make it 
I don't know, like, like right there maybe. Great. Click the check mark to say, all right, I'm finished editing this text. And now all you do is go and change the opacity. Change it fairly low. Okay. Pretty low. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so I'm going to set mine to maybe, what, 3? All right, so I'm going to set mine to 3. That looks about good, 3% opacity. So now you can see through those white letters. All right, so I'm liking that so far. Now I'm going to click a new layer, and now we're going to start getting into the whole core of this tutorial, which is very awesome. It's pretty much making the logo out of words. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm going to add my logo. I'm going to go place, logo. Okay. All right. So next, I'm going to resize this. Now, if I grab a corner and I start resizing, see how it kind of distorts the image? Well, I don't want that. What I want to do is hold shift and then start resizing it so you keep the proportions and it looks really clean. All right. Make sure you hold a corner, though. Don't hold the side because that won't do nothing even if you hold shift. Okay. It'll just mess up the image. Make it a pretty nice size but not too big, not too big to where it'll be distracting. See, that just looks horrible. You don't want that. Make it a pretty good size, okay? Like, mm, I don't know, maybe that's pretty good. It's really up to you, but just don't make it too big, okay? So, and then try to center it as as good as you can, you know? Um, I'm probably, it's not that great, but just click the check mark when you're finished resizing and positioning. Now, next you wanna do is right click this layer here and rasterize it if you need to. Mine needs to be rasterized, because you have this like symbol here, okay? Because I can't edit the image. If I go and try to erase, I'll get this right here. And it'll say, this is a smart object, you have to rasterize it, just click OK. Or what I could have done is right click and go to rasterize. Simple, okay, simple enough, right? You might not need to do that, but if you do, don't don't get all, oh my gosh, what happened, you know, I did something wrong. Don't worry, it, it'll all work out. Okay, so now we have the logo here, looks great. Now we're going to go ahead and add a text over this logo. So let's make another layer. So far we have four layers. Okay, so grab the text tool. And what you want to do is make sure actually this layer right here, this, uh, see how that disappears, that layer, make sure that is also rasterized. Great. This way it doesn't get in the way of your selection. I mean, you can also lock it, but mm, just rasterize it. Okay, now go to your layer 2, the new layer you made, which has nothing on it, and make a new text box, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and type in comp help again. Okay, great. Space. And I'm going to copy and paste that all over. Great. Looks good. Okay. Just, oops. We just rushed the process now. Okay. So, you can see all the words are again jumbled up. Okay. And if yours aren't, just go ahead and move the, uh, the text box. Okay. You know, like resize the text box so it looks all jumbled up. This way it doesn't look so even and spaced and you don't get a very good effect. Alright, so then what I'm going to do here is go ahead and select all this text and make sure it's on a pretty nicely, uh, like a good bold font, okay? You can probably find a better font here, but let me see. Um, let me just remember this one in case I have to use it. Franklin Gothic Demi, okay. So again, you can use any font you want, but make sure it's bold or else the effect won't be as good. I'm going to use genuine for this uh, example here, I guess. Let me move it so the text I'll just make some more. There we go. Okay, so now genuine looks pretty good, but I'm going to resize this a little bit higher to 48. And see how it's all organized? That wouldn't look good if you actually did this effect like that. So I'm going to move it out. So some of the letters get cut off and they have to continue down here and see how it looks all jumbled up in there. Great. All right. So now we have our text in there. Make sure all the text is covering the logo and click the check mark. Simple, right? All right. Now this is the magic. All you're going to do is go to this layer right here. Okay. This text layer that you made. Hold control. See how that square on the hand pops up? Yeah, that's pretty much saying, all right, make a selection of whatever is on that layer. So all I'm going to do is hold control, okay, and click. Now what that does is it makes a selection. Now everything in that layer is selected, and since only the text is in that layer, every piece of that text is selected. Now 
here's the magic. What I want to do is go to this layer right here. Sorry about that. Go to your logo layer. Make sure that logo layer is selected. Go to select inverse. So now everything but the text, you know, in the shape of that text is selected. All right, might seem a little confusing right now, but don't worry. As long as you inversed or inverted that selection, hold control and hit X. Oh no, where'd the logo go? Don't worry, it's right here, check it out. When I go ahead and unhide this text, or hide the text, look at the logo, it's right there. It looks very cool, doesn't it? Look at that. So everything that the, te that the text was uh, selected, you know, all the selected text shows up, but everything else in the logo was pretty much blocked out. It was cut out. So there you go, that's a pretty much simple uh, text effect there. Uh, that's pretty much the wow factor of this wallpaper. Now let's make it look even better. All right, so for my for my logo actually, uh, it's a perfect circle. So what I'm going to do is make a path, and I'm actually going to do a few things. I'm going to for one get rid of this like shadow right here. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go and grab my pen tool. You might not have to do this if your logo has a shadow. I mean, it's really up to you. I'm just going to show you what I did here. Okay, so I'm just going to. It's very simple for me to make a path of my logo because it's a perfect circle. So I mean might not get it perfect here but hey don't want to keep you here too long alright so I'm gonna click the check mark so now we have a path going around that logo go grab my direct selection tool and right click make selection okay alright so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna also inverse or invert this selection as well so now everything outside of this circle in here is selected what I'm gonna do is go ahead and Control X. No, oh, whoops. I was wondering what the heck. Go over here to your layers and make sure the logo layer is selected. Now, Control X. Check it out. Now that shadow is gone. Let me make sure this text. Okay. Now that shadow is gone. Okay. So if I undo that, you see the shadow just got taken out. Very simple, right? All right. So next step. The last step you probably didn't have to do, but here's the next step that you do have to do. If we hide our logo, you can see that there's this text behind the logo, which, uh, I mean, you can keep it in there if you want, but I like to keep it clean, and I don't want that to show up behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make another selection of my logo. Okay? So I'm just going to go Control-T, go and grab this here. If you're wondering what I did, all I did was I grabbed the pen tool. Let me go ahead and cancel this, uh, cancel it out. All I did was I grabbed the pen tool, okay, went to this ellipse right here, and made sure that this right here was on paths, okay? That's all you need. See how it says paths? Alright, so what it's going to do is it's going to make a path. It's very simple. Control T. So now we're just going to go ahead and outline my text and make a path. I mean, outline my logo and make a path out of it. Alright, cool. Check marks say, alright, I'm good to move on. Grab the direct selection tool again. Select all of it. Right click, make selection. Okay. Alright, now what we're going to do here is, instead of editing the logo, I'm just going to hide the logo so you'll see what I do here. I'm going to grab this bottom text layer, make sure that's selected, and then Control X. And there you go, now it's gone. Now if I put the logo on, now it looks nice and clean at least in my opinion. Okay, So now we're almost finished. All we have to do at this point is add the glow effect around the logo. It's very simple. And what I like to do is I like to make a thin line go around the whole logo. I think it looks nice. I mean, you may think different, but that's what I like to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make a new layer and make sure that this layer is under the logo layer. Okay? Alright. So once you're on this layer, make sure it's selected. You know, there's nothing on it. Okay. You're going to go and make yet another path highlighting or, or you know, around your logo. Or whatever graphic that you are uh, doing this effect to. Okay. So here we go. Great. Great. And all right. Eh, good enough check mark alright so before we move on make sure that you have your go to brush right click 
and make sure you're on like one pixel or something very small depends on what you want but this is how thin it's going to be actually what I'm going to do is change this to white so there we go see I have like a uh, nice thin white line you don't want it to be too thick because it's going to go around your logo okay and you don't want it to be thick so what I'm going to do is change it back down to one and you just want it to be like a subtle effect okay so go back to your direct selection and your path should still be there see how it's selected right there I'm going to right click this path and go to stroke path tool make sure it's on brush and click OK press backspace the path is gone but look your thin line is still there that thin line was made from the brush that you just did makes sense right alright so now we have that done alright so Jerry where's the glow effect right click this layer and go to blending options go to outer glow and this is where it's totally up to you you can make your your wallpaper look totally unique make sure that this is on white or at least for me it's on white you can make it green whatever you want I like it on white for this color scheme it looks nice opacity up to 100 and this is where you get all creative mess with the spread and size if I make the size really big and the spread big oh look at that I forgot to delete a little bit of my brush I'll delete that right now but anyways make sure the size is okay and the spread can be lower see right there now look at that now doesn't that just highlight the logo looks pretty cool right so maybe you're like alright that's cool but it's a little bit too bright for my taste alright what you can do right here is go to this like white square might be a different color for you click it and I can change that glow to a different color okay any color you want I still like it white but actually no I'm gonna change it like a like a gray okay just to give it a little bit of pop but not too much alright so I like that effect right there I'm gonna click OK and now it's finished there's your wallpaper doesn't look like that little thing over there is showing up but in case it is I'm gonna go and you know just cover with my eraser tool okay so anyways that right there is a finished wallpaper I know it took a long time very sorry about that what am I at now I'm at 18 minutes wow that's a very long time for this tutorial I could have done it faster but I want to make sure I explained it you know nice for you guys for all the beginners out there especially now the cool thing about the, about these Photoshop tutorials that I do is that you can take this effect for example this logo you know where you block out all the text and everything and I don't know you can actually take that effect and apply it to other pictures let's say you have a family photo you have like four family members put down the names of the family members instead of me writing comp help I'll, I'll write um, Bob Jennifer um, Smitty and Jerry okay and we'll just keep repeating and what do you know? The image will be made out of those letters. It'll, it, I don't know, it'll be a really cool effect. So it's really up to you how you use this effect. But uh, I just thought it was really nice. Thought it was really cool. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please rate, not rate, but thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing on YouTube is totally free. Doesn't cost you a thing. Just make sure you have an account. Follow me on Twitter by going to twitter.com slash comphelp. Check out my vlog channel at youtube.com slash vvphonevv and check out my gaming channel where I play some video games and I record my gameplay there at youtube.com slash jerrygames thank you for watching what can I say I'm gonna let you guys go now have fun with this wallpaper bye before I end this tutorial I just want to go over one last part for my logo I know a lot of people are gonna ask okay so this is a lot brighter than what you came out with on Photoshop how did you do that well check it out now this is bonus if you don't want to see this you don't have to I mean the video is over I'm just gonna show you how I did that it looks brighter okay now all I did was I still have this text layer right check it out all I did was I grabbed that text layer and I brought the opacity down okay simple enough okay so I'm gonna bring it really I'm gonna bring it down right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a selection of that brighter part so I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm gonna click right there and I'm gonna about click right there I'm gonna make about the same curve now it's not gonna turn out perfect because I'm doing this kind of fast but there we go same curve alright and since the brightness really doesn't affect white I'm just gonna go ahead and make my selection all the way around and uh, if it was a different color on the outside make sure you follow the insides okay or else this will also turn out the same color anyways so this is all I did I selected that part went to my direct selection tool and I selected this path right click make selection okay 
So now this everything inside that is selected. All I did was I went to select inverse control X. No, that is not what I did. <laughs> right click this rasterize type. Now control X. Okay, now we have this like leftover stuff here. All I gotta do is grab my eraser tool and you know erase it. It doesn't really matter in the white because uh, you can't really tell the difference between color. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around here, erase, and there we go. You know, that's pretty much what I did with this wallpaper. I mean, it's not exactly, and you can also change the opacity if you want. Change it all the way back up to white, or or not at all, or you know, make it really bright. Whatever you, whatever works for you. That's pretty much what I did there. I had it a lot lower. I had it like right there, I think, somewhere around there. Anyways, that's how I got it brighter. That's what I did. Good luck with your uh, logo making, your wallpaper making. Bye.